What's up guys? Welcome back to another video. So, uh, I'm just in the CRV right now, getting ready to head out to Mercer's. Uh, we It is currently Monday. Uh, we were at the shop on Saturday. I had to go pick up some uh, more things at Gratchik Steam and dropped them off at Mercer's. Uh, he was getting some work done on the Mugen EL. Uh, everything was off camera. Uh, it was just a chill day. We didn't really feel like picking up the camera. It wasn't really nothing exciting. Uh, plus we had a, a friend of ours that uh, we haven't seen in a long time who was just chilling and vibing with us so We uh, We just hung out shot the ship Mercer was doing some more things uh, He's at the shop right now currently we're doing some more stuff. So once I get there uh, I'll give you a rundown of the things we were doing off camera, which is nothing crazy but uh, still uh, progression nonetheless um, I think today we're finishing up everything else in the engine bay as you guys remember seeing uh, last we did the RBC manifold and what we needed to do to get it to, to work on it so that's that so yeah guys making good good progress boys we're making really good progress so we're just gonna continue trucking along and then hopefully everything else just inside the car just the uh, the wiring and everything so that way we can get this thing fired up and uh take it first first made in drive uh with the homie you know get our timmies and all that uh, our traditional first drive of every build so looking forward to it i'm gonna start heading out now and uh we'll see you guys uh maybe along the way on the journey or uh, to the shop or we'll just uh uh, see you guys once we get to the shop. All right, boys. So just in drive through right now grabbing a couple iced coffees for me and Mercer Just got to the shop You can see the homie has been hard at work still working uh, Before I go and show you guys exactly what he's working on now uh, Give you an update on the bay with the harness uh, Fuel lines. He's already got the line for the vacuum going from the booster to the manifold uh, Last time we checked uh, on the last video. We didn't have a throttle body because the OEM wasn't working and uh, Mercer showed you on camera the issue we were having. So on the weekend, I went and I picked up this beautiful unit from Garage 16, a nice 70 mil black edition block throttle body. Mercer's already gone and swapped all the sensors uh, to it. We also have our K-tuned throttle cable right over here. But right now Mercer is tackling the radiator system. Uh, yeah. He went and notched more like how we said on the last video what we were gonna do I just went and put some high heat silver paint on it. So the cut doesn't rust and He's cleaned up the harness that used to run along here. So Merce is just like making everything as clean as possible uh, Without having to actually wire tuck everything but like everything is coming out amazing and now I, I believe the final two pieces if I'm not mistaken is just the throttle body and the radiator system and I think we pretty much all done in the engine bay, Merce? Um, almost. Almost? I, once I do the throttle body, I gotta do the wiring for this. Ah, uh, yes, for the injectors. As you can see, he took out all the loom and everything because he wanted to clean it up. He wasn't a fan of how it was. Yeah, and then once we're done that, then we're done in the engine bay. Then we're gonna start in the interior of the vehicle. That's it, just keep going. I'll clean up all this. I'm just doing this now so I can put in the rad. It's coming along really nice guys Bay cleaned up so so good and Yeah, I'd say we're a good 80% there 80% there. Yep. He's killing it as always okay. All right boys As you guys can see Mercer's just mating the blocks throttle body to the K2 adapter so uh, after Kevin had mounted it to the plate. He realized we still got to chop a little bit more for the uh, uh, TPS. So just gonna give it a little bit more of a notch and it should be clear and then I'll give it some paint just so that cut doesn't rust. All right guys, as you guys can see, Kevin already ran the K-Tune shifter. Uh, wow, K-Tune shifter. K-Tune throttle cable. He's got the blocks throttle body bolted up now. Made the cut, I just gotta go there with my uh, we'll let a little bit of paint. I'm gonna bring my marker in to paint that cut there tomorrow and this cut uh, But yo, it, I, I really dig it. This throttle body looks really nice. It's getting there. Not bad blocks. Not bad It's getting there, man. Yeah, 
Gotta make some adjustments. A lot of things we're doing right now. Mm -hmm. Guys, honestly, man, like I am so pumped for this build, man. Like this has come a long way. Uh, a lot of firsts. Well, this is pretty much straightforward minus this bad boy. Like, you guys see this? You guys take this in. You guys take this in on the fabrication. Let me know what you guys think about that fabrication video that came out. Do you guys like it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You give, did you guys give this man his flowers? Did you give him his due? Hey, man. Uh, this this, this K2 throttle cable is great. But um, every once in a while, I run into this snag where this uh, boot mm -hmm. um, gets in my way. So yep. what I end up doing, and I've seen a lot of guys do this. They chop uh, it off? Mistake. No, they, they just leave it. And what ends up happening is when you press the throttle open. So I'm going to open it. See that guy there, you see how it like it was scrunched up? Yep. Now you see how it unscrunched? Mm -hmm. It doesn't allow the throttle body to close. So you see how it's uh, still open to a touch, yeah. So the mis mistake that a lot of guys do is by leaving it or they'll try to push it up all the way and then it works for a little bit and over time it starts to get loose and it'll come out again. Mm -hmm. nice. Simple trick. <clears throat> Grab your side. Oh, let me go on this side and cut away. Just cut it right off. Not the whole thing. Just cut off like I don't know. We'll start off with two of these uh, rivets, uh, like rumps, whatever you call them. Yeah, I'm not even gonna attempt to call them anything. Just cut away. And that's it. And that's how I end up. Making it work. So that way it won't slide back back down to it. Yeah. Smart. And this so, could be a reason why a lot of guys' throttle bodies just stick open. I've all the had time. many customers come back to me and tell me, like, my throttle body's stuck, it sucks. This little tiny simple little solution rubber. that a lot of guys um, just oversee it. And now we guys, we all know a simple solution. See, condoms don't always save lives. <laughs> the rubber. The rubber got in the way, man. That's it. it. Costs more damage than it does help. But nonetheless, guys, this fucking thing looks beautiful, man. Look at that. There look at go. that. And now? Now I can open it and I can close it as many times as I want. So look. There you go. I forgot to have access here. See? Yep. The opening. It ain't the beautiful. Not in the way. No. So there you go. Let's make our adjustments now. We'll tighten up everything after we go and start the car because I got to make probably some adjustments, adjust our TPS and stuff. But yeah, once the car once the car is uh, ready to fire up, there it is, man. Yeah. So now we got to do some plumbing for our ICV, our idle control valve. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, we got one nipple down here, so this bottom nipple is gonna go hose to the bottom of the ICV mm -hmm. and then this guy right here is gonna go to a nipple that we don't has a don't have as of yet but it's gonna go over here and then uh, that's it for the ICV we're gonna extend now our wiring for our uh, map sensor and our TPS and then once those are uh, done then I can wrap this all up in tape and close off all of this is essentially that all connects um, I've moved this also. I had it up here before. I didn't really like it, so I'm gonna clean this up, move this, zip tie it down here, and yep. essentially have everything running as one. So that's the plan. That's what it's looking like. It's looking we're fantastic. Now onto our radiator. Um, these are our leads for our uh, radiator fans. I'm gonna slap in the radiator right now and start mocking up all of our um, rad stuff. It's coming along great, man. And then that's it. We got our alternator in, if you guys haven't seen it. Um, our alternator belt, uh, the EP3 uh, pulley. Uh, the next thing that we're gonna have to get into afterwards is our power supply, but after, before I get into that, I'm gonna make Paul a custom battery box, so we're gonna mount the battery here. But there is a shortage right now on AMG batteries from uh, part source. We don't wanna go with the yellow top, they'll suck. Horrible. Um, We've had tons of problems with them, so we're not going with the yellow top or any of the red tops or anything like that. Um, the Optima batteries, they suck. So we're going with uh, AMG battery, uh, but we don't know yet which one we're going to go with. Um, we're trying to contact a couple of um, 
part sources and Canadian tires to see if we can source one out. Um, but yeah, that's that's what's left for the front end power wise. Next little bit, we're gonna jump in the interior and start doing up all the uh, wiring for the uh, swap harness. And then we have our shifter wiring. And yeah. then that's pretty And cluster, good. and cluster. But yeah, and cluster, yeah. Cluster, I'm not too worried about. Uh, yeah, cluster I'm not too worried about. It's more our shifter, we gotta get that working so that way we can uh, get it going into the automatic gears and also switch it into manual I think mode. that's gonna be the big thing. Is, is the, the shifter box. Shifter box. No, even for like uh, people searching it and, and finding the, the wiring for that and making it work. Yeah, because nobody really, like from what I've seen, everyone that the two people or the three people that have done it, one in Malaysia and two in, in the States, I believe, mm -hmm. they all say the same thing. It's been a long time. I can't remember exactly which wires. All right. So I, I respect that. That's cool. Yeah, you know what I mean? Cool. Um, so we're going so to find out. They we're did tell us, they yeah. told us it was six wires. I don't know. I'm not going to quote that. Uh, we're going to find out for ourselves. And we're going to make a video on that. And, and we're, uh, we're going to essentially show you guys how, uh, how to wire it up correctly. And uh, that's it. Once you guys are looking for it, the video will be there. Yep. So those are the uh, up and coming videos. This is what it's looking like. I'm very happy with yeah. uh, the way it's looking. Let us know in the comments if you guys are pleased with the way it's coming. I know a lot of you guys were waiting for the swap uh, because I did post a teaser on Instagram and uh, the feedback I got is, fuck, about time. Been waiting for this. So, you know, um, the universe spoke and it was it was the time. And That's Mercer's good. just been killing it, guys. Like, dude, it, it's a beautiful swap, man. Yeah, super stoked about it. A lot of um, meticulous little tiny things where we have to constantly put put something on, take it off, measure it, cut away. So it's uh, time consuming, um, a lot of that little meticulous uh, stuff. But uh, hey man, it's part of the swap, part of the game, and we just got to keep on getting it done. 100%. So let's get back at it, finish off. We'll he looks so cute with those safety glasses. Right? Yeah. At least you don't look like a bottle this time. I forgot I even had them on then. Uh, sometimes they just float on my face. I can't take it serious. <laughs> so yeah, let me get to this wiring and um, finish this up, wrap this all up, and get to the next thing. 11 minutes later. All right, guys. We are about to torque down the bolts for the torque plate. Yeah, so the drive plate to the uh, torque converter. And uh, these are 10 millimeters. I just cleaned them up, put some blue Loctite, and uh, they get torqued at um, 8.7 foot pounds of torque. But if you don't have a torque stick that can go to 8.7, just uh, torque it at 9 uh, foot pounds of torque, and then that's it. So I'll do it in a crisscross pattern. So we'll do like the first one. So 9.4. That's the one I just did. All right, after, uh, I mean, put the vehicle in uh, neutral. If you don't know, go all the way forward. And that's essentially park. There's your neutral. Sorry, there's your neutral. And then, I honestly didn't even know that that's what that thing was. I was wondering where that was the other day. Yeah, and now we're gonna turn it around. There's our crisscross pattern. So this is the next one. Oh, 9.3. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy, the camera full up, picked that up. Turn this guy around. That's amazing. So, you guys get the idea. And basically, once you're done going around to the first one, then you start the other one and so vice versa. So that one there. So just keep going at the last one. So now we're gonna hit that one. If it gets uh, to the point where it's spinning on you, just jam the uh, driver. 
hold it. That went a little excessive there. Two, not bad. Yeah. All right, guys. So, we're cutting out the tabs on the radiator because we got to re weld them and relocate them to the rat support on the ES1. We had to, uh, on the new Guinea, sorry. We had to do the exact same thing on the Spoon ES1. So, that's what you see I'm doing right now is just cutting off the tabs. Gonna reposition and uh, aluminum weld them to the right spot so that it mounts 100%. All right guys, so yesterday we had to cut the video a little short. Mercer had to go take care of some stuff on the S2K because they are getting it painted. So we're picking up where we left off yesterday and that is pretty much getting the radiator all situated so we can weld the little uh, things that you saw Mercer cutting off, the, the stays I guess you could call them, for the, as you guys can see how off they are from where the rad stays are originally on the D uh, D17. So he's just got to reposition them and uh, aluminum weld them. Also, he's got to do the ones on the bottom because one lined up, but the other one didn't. But to get it to line up evenly, you have to cut both of them and reposition both. So that is the, the current task that Mercer is actually doing right now. I already did the bottom ones. Oh, okay. So Kevin's already done the bottom ones. Oh, uh, well, I wasn't here. Yes. Uh, as you guys can see, these are the red stays that we are using, the same ones we had on the D17. They're horrible. They don't even work. Just try to change this angle. If I'm not mistaken, I think we crushed them even more on the Spoon S1. I believe so. I believe so too. All right, boys. Mercy's just making the opening on the rad stay a little bit open, a uh, little bit more open, so it lines up with our thread over here. So a little shaving with the Dremel, as you guys can see, and then we'll get. A nice fit. All right, boys. So that's pretty much how it's gonna look. Where it's gonna be sitting. Kev's gonna grind this down a little bit more so it's it's more flush. But that's the position more or less, right over there. That's the position where they're gonna sit. It's gonna look amazing, guys. Uh, what we're also gonna do after is on the bumper itself, we're gonna cut around here so that way we can alleviate a lot of heat buildup over here because. Uh, that's one common thing with the seven gens with a full covered grill. They retain a lot of heat there and we want as much airflow going in. All right, boys, as you see, the red state prongs are, are nice and welded. Man, look at this nice little fucking bead over here that Mercer did on the aluminum. Yeah, so much better. It's gonna come in handy, Kev, when you uh, supercharge the seven gen, eh? Those uh, nice downpipes on the Kraftworks. Yeah, man. We'll do it. Yeah. But this is what it's looking like. Excited. So basically, now that pretty much everything cooling wise uh, is situated up here in the front, we're gonna run the oil cooler. Uh, nice show plan. you guys how Mercer's gonna run it. Uh, it's gonna. It's a big. It's a big unit, a big upgrade from the D17 uh, oil cooler that we were running. Uh, this one's gonna definitely help the uh, the temps on this transmission stay cool. We're also running an inline filter for the trans, so that way we have no uh, we have minimal risk of anything happening. That is correct. So looking good, boys. Oh, look at the contrast there. Look at that detail, boys. The bottom ones, the top ones. We uh, wired up the uh, fans. We did all the uh, wiring for the map sensor, the TPS, the map sensor TPS. Look at the job he did on this, guys. The, he cleaned uh, it up nice. As you guys remember in the last video, like when we were doing the RBC, it was kind of like spaghetti going on over there. But he he cleaned it up. Not bad for a uh, modified stock harness. Uh, obviously, if we had like a uh, a made harness, which maybe in the future we'll look into, seeing if we get a custom harness made for the tranny and the motor to really clean up everything. That'd be a good idea. Yep, but uh, we're not done with this build by no means. 
necessary. We still, down the road, we're gonna show you guys how to delete the ABS and run a, a, a prop valve. Uh, maybe down the road we'll clean up like some body wires and all that, but that's in the future. Still a couple transformations this car's got left in it. All right guys, so as you see, we're just here with our Hayden uh, racing oil cooler. Just looking over the instructions. To supply good quality hose, radiator, uh, well, essentially like a radiator, and then the fittings that you need to go into here to run the hose, and then all the rest of the hardware right here. It's a nice unit that we got on Amazon. I'll have the link below in my description as always. As you guys see, the radiator is mounted. Mercer has mounted the oil cooler. That's more or less where he wants it positioned. So that way, if you look at the bumper, we may or may not, not sure yet, but the black plastic inside the uh, center of the bumper, we might chop that up to help with airflow. But anyways, we positioned it there so that way the center of the bumper allows the airflow directly to the oil cooler and in turn keeping the cooler fresh. Uh, we've gone and decided that we're going to mount the oil filter over here on this bracket for the front mount and then run the line. So he's just going to pull everything out uh, to do something on the radiator and then we are going to weld the subframe, paint it, mount the subframe and then start tackling everything so that way everything is mounted and he knows exactly how to run the oil uh, filter and the lines leading from the tranny to the cooler and vice versa. I got it? Bang it buddy. Fucking mint. Guys, we're almost done over here and ready to go in there. You know what happens after that's all done in there? You want to tell the people Kev? We crank it. We start it. Look at that that's smile. Idea, man. Yeah! So, also right before I, I, I let Kevin shut, uh, talk, I shut off the camera like a dummy. But he wanted to say that we got fluids going in today, so we'll start with uh, after the subframe and uh, is reassembled, the radiator. I'm just going to take it out right now because I'm going to install the zip ties that uh, hold the oil cooler to the radiator. Obviously, I can't get to the zip ties back here because of our shroud, so I have to disassemble it all uh, to put the tabs to hold it all. Once I put all that, I'm going to run all the hoses and then we can start putting fluids in. That's a good sign. That's an amazing sign. Mm -hmm. So, let's get it. Let's get it, man. All right, guys. So, Kev's going to get ready to weld uh, that part of the subframe that we cut in the very beginning of the series. Uh, I went to go get some bomb-ass ice, uh, ice caps because our boys are thirsty. And I know it's winter, but we wanted something cold because we need something to cool off because we're about to bring some fire. So, as you can see, he's already grinded it up. So that way he can give it a nice stitch weld there. And then I'm going to grab that can of paint that was over there somewhere. And I'm going to give it a nice coat of high heat black. So we can put this bad boy permanently back on the car. So we can get this thing crack a lacking. Dude. You said thirsty. Yeah. Just thirst. What are you talking about? In the beginning of this thing, you said, we have to go get us some ice caps for our thirsty. That's so Portuguese, bro. Whatever, bro. You know what I mean. Hey, man. Don't fix me, okay? <laughs> don't fix me. I fix you. Right, I'm going to look away, but you guys can look into the light. It's too hot. Huh? He's too hot, man. It's like you're playing with two nipples right there. Nipples. As you guys can see, the subframe is painted. We're just letting it dry a bit more so uh, we can mount it. Uh, Kev has already placed uh, the rad hose on the top. We're gonna do the bottom one. Uh, I got one clamp, the other clamp was broken, so I gotta go buy the plug tomorrow and pick up uh, two packs of clamps. He's running the hose now for the transmission cooler. As you guys can see, he's got the bottom hose already running. No, this is for the overflow. No, I'm showing them the transmission hose that you have in the bottom already. Oh, I thought you were And then this one is for the overflow. As you guys can see, he's going to run it this way. 
into our overflow can so it's going to be tucked under the rad support running cleanly uh, attention to detail boys attention to detail <laughs> you guys can make a bay look really beautiful without having to go to the extremes of a tuck and everything like that that is a very tedious job i've seen them do it it sucks it could be way better but but god what are you talking about this is this is beautiful man yeah it's already nice but eventually it could get better shoulda coulda woulda coulda stuff yeah you know uh, and it's beautiful because now look we have now room if we have to service the bulbs on the the lights we have room on both sides now all right boys as you guys can see Kevin's placing the DC header you started something you started something Stop. are you just doing this for mocking up the exhaust uh, yeah. Okay, okay. Because as I say, we don't have the gasket. No. Okay. But, yeah. Um, that's the We're going with the DC sports header, as you guys can tell. Um, really, because eventually we're going boost, so we made more sense not to go with an expensive header. Yeah. Right? Makes but, sense. But just so uh, I'm test for it right now so I can see what happens to be done. Yep. Because we got to put our. Uh, it's underneath uh, that pan, but uh, our uh, straight alytic, uh, dog alytic, you know which one I'm talking about also. Uh, in between, and then it may or may not work because of the S-Bend right here. This, If you have a DC5 and the 7 Gen, you guys know, this bend is the worst bend for an exhaust. It hits everything. It hits everything. Subframe is bolted up. Kev is now routing the top line that is going to be going to the filter and then to the trans. So we are almost done over here, guys. Almost done and ready to start everything else. Kev? He's definitely a happy man. We're making great strides right now. Joined by the homies, Ruben and Otto. Ruben's just enjoying that muffin. Look at that. Ah, bite that fucker. That boy, Ruben. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. So Kevin's grabbed his sawzall. He's just cutting this flange off because we're gonna put the... Well, we don't have the other meat to this side over here. We have a different size flanges. Mm -hmm. um, that you purchased. I don't know where you got those, so we're just gonna cut this guy and put those flanges on. Yes, because I got the ones from Grass 16. This already came with the header, yeah. so we can't reuse this. That's why I got the uh, the ones from Grass 16. So we're gonna cut both of these off and put the new ones. And cut these guys off, put those, and then these guys are eventually gonna make their way somewhere here. Yeah, so basically here and here are gonna get the two V bands. Correct. That's it. Yes, that's the word. All right, boys. So the V-band end on this one is cut. Where we had that piece of pipe with that other flange is cut. Uh, shave down the cut, make it smooth. And then Kevin's gonna take a measurement of what he needs to put our catalytic back on. Yeah, he just took that out of the way. Uh, but it looks nice. Uh, maybe we should just run an open header. Bah, 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 bah. It's K's open header sound insane. They do. But, yeah, uh, I just took that out of the way, so I uh, have it uh, done. And now I'm going to just adjust my cable. So we're going to jump inside and start doing our uh, interior uh, work. Ooh. Pretty much done off here. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Then, uh, yeah, that's it. Let's get inside. Let's just take out this cable. Two 10 mil volts. And then ready to uh, proceed. Dun, dun, dun. So, uh, so we're gonna be basically focusing on everything inside now. Uh, I'm gonna close this video off now because I don't wanna mix the two because there's gonna be a lot of important information when it comes to the wiring and it's gonna be too much to cram up. So basically you guys know how we ran the oil cooler setup, the radiator setup, and all the other little miscellaneous things that we did in this vlog. Uh, but I want to dedicate everything wiring inside the car 
to that because I don't want to make I don't want to miss out on anything. You guys need to know all the important steps to it. So I think it's safe to say, Kev, we close it off here for this vlog. Yeah. That was, safe that, to was, say. that was fucking Baywatch style right <laughs> there, bro. That's why this guy just pulled a freaking Mitch McCannon. Mitch McCannon, that was <laughs> awesome. Uh guys. We're gonna close it off here. Yep. Uh, I mean, we are gonna pick up afterwards when we do the exhaust. Yeah. Uh, like, we've never actually started any of the builds with the connected exhaust. They've always been open header. Probably. Yeah. Say so, yeah, you're right. It makes it sound better. They, it, it makes it, it just sound so much better. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You wanna close it off, guys? I always pull it off. You pull it off this time. Yeah, sure. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Um, see you in the next one. Don't forget to uh, share the video, like, and get some of your friends to subscribe. Help build the uh, the channel, dude. Thanks, guys. One step closer to sending it, boys. It's true. Some more episodes left. Peace.